And I think people don't realize to what extent we're able to utilize the energy in the sun for very good purposes. It catalyzes enzymes that do very important things. And I've talked about it in my book, but one of the things I believe is happening is that when you get sunlight exposure to the eyes, it's reaching the pineal gland, which is right behind the eyes. And the pineal gland is a very interesting gland. It's called the seat of the soul. You know, it's very mm -hmm. mystical. And it's the one that controls sleep. It makes the melatonin, you know, that helps you sleep. And we've got an epidemic of sleep disorder as well. But the pineal gland responds to sunlight. So if you get sunlight in the morning, the pineal gland starts making sulfate. It makes sulfate in response to sunlight. And then it uses that sulfate at night and hooks it onto the melatonin molecules that it ships out into the cerebral spinal fluid. So it's making melatonin sulfate and putting it into the cerebral spinal fluid that's supplying the brain with sulfate as well as with mel melatonin. And those are both really critical to help the brain clear cellular debris, which is what you do while you're sleeping. So it really helps you sleep, but it also helps you keep your brain healthy because you could clear those amyloid beta plaques if you had enough melatonin sulfate. And just going on the sun will produce cholesterol sulfate. Yeah, that's right. And that's the critical one. Cholesterol sulfate is what I write a lot about in my papers. Um, I believe it's a very important molecule, and I believe it is uh, derailed in uh, by glyphosate because the enzyme that makes um, – there's an enzyme called endothelial nitric oxide synthase, which makes nitric oxide. But I believe it also makes sulfur dioxide. It has – it's a um, – Moonlighting enzyme, it's called. It makes two things, and it depends on where it is and the circumstances as to which one it makes. It's a kind of a yin and a yang. And those two actually work together to keep the blood circulation at the right viscosity level. It's really fascinating science. And it relates to the uh, fourth phase of water because the sulfate structures the water and makes the gel that lines the blood vessels, and that allows the uh, red blood cells to slip through the capillaries with very little friction. So really important to have the sulfate. In fact, it's cholesterol sulfate that's produced in the skin in response to sunlight. And then the cholesterol sulfate is released into the blood and it can travel freely in the blood. It doesn't have to be packaged up inside an LDL particle. So when you're not making enough cholesterol sulfate, your liver is compelled to release more LDL particles and your LDL goes up. And that's the one that gets you on a statin drug. So I think that high cholesterol is a consequence of low cholesterol sulfate. Right. And of course, oxidized LDL is the thing that's, you know, damaging. Um, oxidized LDL is what will cause you to end up get with cholesterol accumulating in the arteries that supply the heart. And um, I have some very interesting theories about that as well that has to do with um, your heart is actually squirreling away uh, uh, cholesterol in its arteries because it desperately needs cholesterol. It's waiting for sulfate in mm -hmm. order to get the cholesterol delivered. And, and the sulfate gets delivered at the same time. So both the cholesterol and the sulfate are supporting each other to help them travel through the blood. Neither one of them does a good job of traveling through the blood without the other. You put them together and they have a much easier time to get around, which allows them to be distributed throughout your body. And when they arrive at a destination, they break apart and the sulfate goes into the extracellular matrix and the cholesterol goes into the membrane and the, and the cell is very happy to receive both of them. Cholesterol is not a toxin. It is an essential mm -hmm. nutrient. It's vital to health, you know, and it's only found in animals that plants don't have cholesterol, which is interesting.